We don't have our schedule yet for today. We'll be heading out soon, but I suspect that uh, the train station will again be another stop just so we can report on what we saw. We've reported the presence of more than 100 small armed groups uh, with many armed men, and they, uh, they aren't... I just have to tell you right now that we did hear some heavy, what seemed like heavy weapon firing in the background as well. And, and what we were hearing just then was the outbreak of fighting as Ukrainian government forces launched an assault on Donetsk to break the rebels' control of the city. Loud explosions have been heard in the center of Donetsk in eastern Ukraine. A separatist leader said government forces were trying to enter the rebel-controlled city and that fighting was underway near a railway station. Railway station! An official from the rebels' self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic said at least four tanks and armored vehicles were trying to break in. The Ukrainian military wouldn't comment, saying only that the general operation against the separatists was in an active phase. The zone of control around the airport of Donetsk is broadening, and in general the anti-terrorist forces uh, are See, uh, hold an initiative. Ukrainian army tanks were reported to be launching an assault to break pro-Russian rebels' hold on the eastern city of Donetsk on Monday. This is the first major outbreak of hostilities in the area since Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 was shut down last week. Now, in many directions, including uh, to Donetsk, we unblock approaches into the city and we destroy uh, checkpoints of terrorists. We, as we see, cars don't have any relation to the Ukrainians, to anything. This is the same thing that happens in the asphalt. We see inside the wall. We hear on the sound that there is still an air attack on the ground. Was it wise to begin a military action in Donetsk this morning? There is no indication of any kind of military activity or counter-terrorist operation at the area of crash site. We do understand our responsibility because the key priority is to collect all evidences and to have thorough investigation. So clarify, can the Ukrainian government guarantee no military action along the route that the train must take in order to get to Kharkiv? Minamet na obstrel ведёт до сих пор. Вот собственно дом от цеха в Тучмаши. Дым от цеха в Тучмаши. Бомбит территорию. Там, откуда не эвакуированы обычные жители. А если нас бомбят, то они все не с нами. Они, походу, вся Украина против нас. Я не знаю, почему. We realized that the roads had all been cut off to the station, so we thought we'd take a back route to that area. Uh, and the shelling uh, had pretty much uh, started. Now we were running along a, a laneway and with everybody else, locals included. We were offered uh, sanctuary in a, in a basement and these are extraordinary scenes. They're, they're, they're basements that are built into the outside of buildings so they're accessible literally from the pavement. You can just duck down and these basements are huge. They take up to 100 people. So we went into one uh, near a school. It is uh, holidays here at the moment but there were 70 odd kids under that building uh, uh, taking sanctuary as, uh, as mortar shells were falling everywhere. I mean, they were just being fired indiscriminately. People were running across parks. These, uh, they had these beautiful little courtyard parks in the middle of these tall uh, apartment blocks. Uh, and very tragically, um, as we walked along the park, uh, a local there said, um, you better see this, knowing we were, uh, we were foreign media. And there was a lady who, uh, you know, moments earlier had been uh, walking across that courtyard uh, and she was dead. Further along the road, uh, another two, uh, two bodies, uh, two men standing on a roadway. Uh, they fell where a mortar dropped. Um, and then further along still, uh, another man who presumably had heard the whistles from the mortar and were, was trying to take cover. There's a period of quiet now, but the shelling is bound to start again. What seems to be happening is that there is fighting going on around the airport area, and also there's been an attack of some kind on a building near the train station, and that's just up here. In the suburbs of Donetsk, our military men succeeded to capture main roads to Donetsk.
the suburb of Donetsk, Piski, uh, is taken under control. That allows to ensure the uh, protection of the reservoir, which is so important for water supply to this region. Our colleagues on the ground in Donetsk are seeing shelling from the airport, the area of the airport, which is under the control of the Ukrainian forces, toward the rail station. Could you clarify the point you told us earlier about the government forces not firing, uh, not shelling within the city? That appears not to be the case at this point from the eyewitness accounts from here. Сегодня 21 число, да, по-моему, ЖД вокзал. Сейчас из окруженного аэропорта пытаются фашисты прорваться. К ним подошла помощь. Стреляют по Донецку с градов, стреляют по Донецку с минометов. Мы держимся, что еще здесь можно сказать. Людей эвакуировали, мы не держимся. Пытаемся как-то их спасти. Про себя не думаем, в основном думаем про людей. Это наша основная задача. here in Dzerzhinsk, Ukraine, and I was called this morning and informed that the Ukrainian army will be coming into Dzerzhinsk to eradicate the separatists. There's a building and I can see flames coming out of the top of the building. You can hear the planes flying overhead. They came in for an airstrike. It's right there. Yeah, there it goes, it's firing. In Zerzhinsk, uh, above the uh, municipal administration, the state flag of Ukraine is hoisted. The, the Ukrainian uh, military localize and eliminate the rest of the terrorists and bandits. But they still control the area and they still control the railway station in Tourette City. With which we, with the guns and barrels, and grenade launchers. This is the way how they control the area. Today we have Peter Van Vliet. Uh, he's the team leader for, of the forensic expert team from the Netherlands. I have watched uh, the, the, the train and the, the wagons, and I uh, uh, think uh, the, the storage of the bodies is, uh, uh, is good of quality. The train is going uh, on transport. We don't know the time, we don't know the destination, but they, we got the promise the train is going. Literally minutes ago we got news that Dutch investigators have now arrived at the scene of the plane crash. You're seeing what's happening here right now. This is what, in a way, we've been waiting for. The OSC is now joined by Dutch investigators. This is all happening amid reports that fighting has been renewed in Donetsk, where we all just came from, that Ukraine is trying to retake that city. So on the first day we arrived here, we did come to the site. It was a bit chaotic, but that got better the next day and then yesterday and today. Today we have um, three Dutch uh, forensic experts with us and they're getting pretty much unfettered access. I'm impressed about uh, uh, the, the, the size of the, the crash site, about the, the tragedy that it has to be uh, uh, going on uh, and I'm very impressed about um, the, the work that is done over here, uh, uh, seeing the, the means and the people who did it and the weather and the circumstances. Uh, I think they did a hell of a job in a hell of a place. As I said before, you have international teams already in place prepared to conduct the investigation and recover the remains of those who have been lost. But unfortunately, the Russian-backed separatists who control the area continue to block the investigation. They've repeatedly prevented international investigators from gaining full access to the wreckage. As investigators approached, they fired their weapons into the air. The separatists are removing evidence from the crash site, all of which begs the question, what exactly are they trying to hide? Moreover, these Russian-backed separatists are removing bodies from the crash site, oftentimes without the care that we would normally expect from a tragedy like this. And this is an insult to those who've lost loved ones. 
The last couple of days we've received very disturbing reports of bodies being moved about and looted for their possessions. Just for one minute, I'm not addressing you as representatives of your countries, but as husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, just imagine that you first get the news that your husband was killed. And then within two or three days, you see images of some thug removing the wedding band from their hands. This is not the conflict between Ukraine and Russia. This is the global conflict and this is the global threat. Russia is on the dark side. Christian, I don't see any differences from the tragedy 9-11, from the tragedy of uh, Lockerbie, and from the tragedy of Grabova on the Ukrainian side, uh, on the Ukrainian sky. What DOD reported to me is that to get this target and to shoot down the plane, they need to work in collaboration with another radar systems that we don't have on Ukrainian territory. Earlier this evening, I spoke to Alexander Borodai, who is in command of the region where the tragedy occurred. We have agreed the following. The train will depart this evening. The two black boxes will be handed over to a Malaysian team in Donetsk who will take custody of them. Thirdly, independent international investigators will be guaranteed safe access to the crash site to begin a full investigation of the incident.